Welcome to the presentation, and wow, look at all these people. It's great to see you all here, and Francesco and I and the other uh, Paiju API developers who are in the crowd, you'll see them with the, uh, with the blue t-shirts, are excited to, to give you an update on this project. We'll walk through an overview of the project, core capabilities, what we've been up to lately, and provide a, uh, a showcase of, uh, of selected projects and tell you where we're going. Overview, so the project was started in, uh, in 2000, uh, 2018 um, on Valentine's Day. I'm happy to say I'm still married, so uh, <laughs> fair enough. Uh, and we, we, we're, we're also an OGC project, so I'll provide some more information on that. So we've been uh, there for, for, for a few years working on this stuff. The PyGeo API project itself is a geo, geospatial data API framework that specializes on all the OGC API standards. So that is our, our bread and butter in, ser in, terms of, uh, in terms of the project. We support and are compliant to uh, the OGC API standards and we are, uh, are also a reference implementation. We have a large international team which is, uh, which is great across many time zones um, and numerous uh, contributors from, uh, from, from all over the world. And like, uh, like many open source projects, we leverage a lot of other open source projects which, happen, uh, which, which help us achieve our goal faster. So kudos to those upstream uh, projects as always. This is the impatient install. So this is one of my trademarks. Uh, if I can't install anything in five minutes, then I, I just forget about it. So this is really important. Uh, and uh, PyGeo API is no different in terms of getting you up and running for an API server. We have a core abstract API. You can actually use PyGeo API without using it over the web. Um, we have a simple configuration management, and we have uh, automated uh, open API uh, generation. And we have a, a, a plugin architecture, which allows you to define uh, and, and build your own plugins depending on your depending on, on on your requirements. It's very important for us to have minimal core dependencies, so y you should be able to install this on your laptop without needing heavy-duty infrastructure or any uh, uh, big cloud things, for example. And that continues to be a trademark. Of the, uh, of the project while allowing it to scale out to um, more elaborate uh, deployment schemes. This is our sort of uh, uh, C4 uh, architecture diagram of the project. So again, we have a core API in the middle and we allow it to be used by any downstream uh, web framework in the, in the Python sense. So whether your, your organization is using Flask or Starlet or FastAPI, we, uh, the abstraction allows for any, any of those web frameworks to be uh, to be used, and again, we have a plugin framework which allows you to build out your own uh, data providers, your own output formats, and your own uh, your own processes. There are some examples of what we do with our uh, provider flame framework. So this has really been valuable for us in terms of uh, um, having additional contributions from uh, from the community. So there's a number of different. I would say most of the work in PyGeo API these days is building out these uh, these different providers. So it's really valuable to have that plugin architecture to be able to have these uh, uh, things added relatively easily to the code base. As I mentioned, we do have a processing framework, which is very popular for uh, uh, for running maybe long running jobs or or or, or intense uh, computations. You can implement your own. If you know Python, you can just implement it and tie it to the way PyGeo API does plugins and you're off and running. Our deployment story is also a relatively low barrier, so we have a number of different ways to deploy. Uh, we have Docker support, obviously. We're on Conda. We're in the, uh, we have uh, Ubuntu GIS or Debian packages for those who are, uh, uh, for those who are into that. So that's a, a core, uh, a core tenant of the project is being able to have a number of different ways to deploy. I'll give it to, uh, hand it over to Francesco. So let, let's move into our core capabilities. There is a number of uh, new OGC specification that uh, PyGUPI supports. Uh, this is the landing page of the, of the server. Uh, it is uh, represented by HTML, but uh, on top or right you see uh, different links to um, jump into the JSON and JSON LD representation. 
uh, we obviously support the uh, open API, so you can reach the basically what formerly uh, known as Wugger uh, uh, page on a, a route, and you can obviously through this open API document uh, interact with the client and consume all the uh, capabilities that the Pudge API supports. Uh, we support uh, OGC API features, uh, which is uh, the, the stable version actually uh, available from OGC. And obviously you can, you, you see in the HTML representation, we support the different routes, so you can uh, surf, navigate through the collection and for each specific collection to the items. And obviously we offer uh, pagination, so uh, again, the client can consume and uh, you know, fetch the collection and the, the items in a smart way. Uh, also, we, there are these, uh, these new these, uh, capabilities is not uh, really um, stable yet, but we uh, support the early specification of coverage. Uh, and then as uh, Tom already mentioned with PyCSW and uh, again in PyGOPI, we support OGC API records. Uh, there is an implementation, uh, still uh, early implementation of OGC API tiles. Uh, we support uh, pre-generated uh, tiles uh, that can be uh, locally uh, exposed or remotely. So you can, for, for instance, uh, uh, you can make available, for instance, a mini bucket and consume an HTTP backend resource and uh, publish your tiles through PyGO API. We support again uh, processes, or as uh, Tom already explained it. You can obviously um, execute the process, the process and get the result back in a, a restful, restful way. And again, through a JSON representation you can combine in a client, the different interaction. Uh, also, we support OGC environment data retrieval, EDR, which is obviously uh, more important for uh, multidimensional data. And again, uh, the stack implementation, we support static catalog at the moment, but there is the plan to add the stack API as well. And finally, you can customize the PyGAPI HTML rendering with a template mechanism that PyGAPI offer. Our latest development, we are officially uh, an OSGEO project after uh, some months of incubation, so we have been graduated. Very good to all the team. Thank you very much. And this is quite important. We usually uh, participate uh, with the team, the, 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 the member team of the core uh, uh, developers in the different OGC API sprint that uh, uh, the Open Geospatial Consortium is, um, is calling. And uh, yeah, so we are actually uh, very focused on uh, being uh, updated with the uh, specification that uh, are moving, moving on during the, the, the year. Uh, we are even adding new specification, new implementation like the roots. Um, and thank you the great work that the Nature and Schematics uh, team have done. Um, and so expect to, you know, uh, use different, a lot of different uh, OGC API specification on top. And, and as uh, Tom mentioned, obviously through the uh, flexibility of the PyGPI configuration, 
you basically can plug whatever you want to be published to PyGPI. So you are flexible to use PyGPI for your own purpose. Okay, I can skip this. I think that's enough. That's still me. Okay, we have new committers. Uh, there is Joanna from the developer relation from the OGC. The, she is a long time contributor to Fos4G project, and uh, we are very happy that she is on board on the PyGPI uh, project. And then there, in, there is Ben Webb, who joined the recently. He is working with the Lincoln Institute of Land Policy, Center of Geospatial Solution, and he provides a very interesting new uh, ESRI plugin to uh, fetch an ESRI REST endpoint into PyGPI as a backend provider. So please have a look to the GitHub repo. Uh, there are a number of service provider that you can uh, you can take a look on the on the link. We offer training, uh, installation, setup, deployment. We, we are cloud native, so you can ask for the support of cloud implementation of PyGPI, and they can provide core development and and so on. Hierarchical collection, we support this mechanism of, mechanism of hierarchical collection, so you can combine, com, combine uh, very nested uh, URI resources into PyGPI to support different, you know, um, uh, REST styling implementation and your custom interface for your clients. Uh, there are a number of new features, uh, new plugins like the ESRI that I mentioned, Socrata, uh, Stack 8 OS. Uh, we support uh, the migration on the HTML file to Bootstrap, uh, publication of hidden resources that uh, you, want, you don't want to advertise in, on the OpenAPI document and new, uh, you know, format like gzip support. And I'll pass the ball to, again, to Tom, please. Thanks, Francesco. So we'll walk through some uh, um, selected recent projects who have been using, uh, using PyGU API. The first one I'll talk to is uh, WIST2 in a box. So, um, just putting a plug there for, uh, uh, for everybody to attend our WIS2 in a Box presentation. So I'm giving that with Dave Berry from WMO later on today at 12.30 if I'm, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And it uses PyGeo API for the API component. This project is a reference implementation which represents um, an evolution or a revolution in the way that international weather, climate and water data exchange is going to happen at WMO. Um, it's a free and open source project, and Pi, Pi Geo API is baked inside the inside of the API component. So we're very excited about um, about this project, and we're uh, we're going to present on it later today. The US Geo platform uh, has recently released uh, uh, an initial iteration based on uh, based on Pi Geo API. So this is. Uh, providing a central point of access for federal geospatial metadata and services. So we're excited about, uh, uh, about their deployment, so kudos to them. Emotional Cities also has a, uh, 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 an implementation, whoops, which uh, uh, concentrates on urban living uh, correlated with mental health and, uh, and well-being. So it's a pretty cool project to, uh, uh, to check out. The BGS, the British Geological Survey, also has their own OGC API server powered by, uh, by PyGeo API. And uh, they make a number of their uh, uh, geological data sets uh, available. So you can see here that they've implemented the custom templating that, uh, that uh, we discussed earlier. Great job there. GeoE3 is a geospatial enabled ecosystem for Europe. And they, uh, they, also, they also deploy using PyGeo API. 
a lot of organizations um, are starting to uh, use the project and, and make, it a, make their data available through, uh, through the OGC API uh, standards. So really exciting to see this. Some of these projects also contribute uh, back also uh, a number of uh, features and bug fixes and so on. GeoConnects is uh, obviously one of them as well. Um, there's the custom templating that they're using there. There's also something called River Runner, which is basically you click a point on the map and it's, it sends a Paiju API request and it'll do like an, a web application will do an animated, uh, um, uh, an animation of how the river flows. You can point on anywhere in the, uh, uh, anywhere in the, in the world for that matter. So I encourage people to check out this presentation and the links in there and check out that application. It is absolutely uh, fantastic uh, to see it working live. Wish I can give a live demo, but uh, uh, happy to do that offline. So really interesting use and of uh, Paiju API for, for real processing. In terms of roadmap, we're not at a 1.0 yet. Um, we do want to implement the OGC API maps and styles specifications. There is an OGC API sprint in, this, in late November, December in Brussels, if I'm not mistaken. So our goal, our target is to implement uh, those specifications at that sprint. Um, we do have a little bit of refactoring to do. So with any project that has a high amount of contributions and a lot of uh, implementation, um, there is some, uh, there is, you do have to step back once in a while and do some refactoring, and we do want to do that with the, uh, with the API. We also want to support transactions, so being able to create, update, uh, and, and delete, uh, delete data accordingly in, in, in alignment with OGC API features part four, if I'm not mistaken. And there's also uh, discussions uh, on implementing uh, a Google BigQuery uh, provider plugin that Francesco's company is, uh, uh, is involved in. So that'll be an upcoming feature that'll be made available to the community. Again, here's our uh, uh, support page. So we have a number of different uh, service providers, again, who can provide either core development, uh, deployment, customization, trainings, workshops, and so on. We gave a, we gave a uh, diving into Paiju API workshop on Monday for those of you who were able to attend that, so we thank you again for that. The, uh, the workshop itself is online, so if you go to dive.paijuapi.io, it's fully there for, for you to check out and, uh, and, and get involved. Uh, or if you wanted to contact uh, any of the uh, commercial service providers, those are, they're all, all made available there. If your company or organization uh, wants to provide uh, support for, Pi, for PyGeo API, you can, uh, um, you can get in touch and, and make a pull request and add your organization here as well. So those are some uh, links to the project. Again, we're on, uh, that's our homepage. We have a Twitter channel. Um, uh, our documentation and we're, we're fully open. We have a Gitter channel for people to, uh, to interact. So we welcome the community for uh, uh, suggestions and ideas, bug fixes, contributions. Um, there's a, been a lot of activity in this project in the, last, uh, in the last few years and we're happy to see that the community is growing and uh, the people behind it are, are, are dedicated to the project. We're fully in line with the OGC API standards, and I should also plug uh, the OSGO and OGC talk that uh, Joanna, Quadrina, my, and myself will do tomorrow, which will touch upon uh, some of the important aspects of, uh, of that relationship, which PyGeo API is benefiting from to allow us to implement the standards in a very low barrier way. So uh, um, feel free to get involved. We want to thank you for listening and thank you for your attendance and look forward to any questions or comments. Grazie.